Join me, David Attenborough, at Kew and discover the kingdom of plants. Witness a hidden realm in intimate detail, vivid colour and rich texture. All we have to do now is to wait for the flowers to open. Here in Kew you have not, oh, nearly 90% of all plant known species, all known plant species, uh, represented in one way or another. Not all growing of course, many are in the herbarium. But it means that you can get a survey of the world's plants here, which is almost unrivaled. And uh, so we've been able to bring our 3D equipment here and you'll be seeing plants from the tropical Americas, from the Amazon, from the deserts of, of uh, New Mexico, from the Arctic, the Alps, all over the place. If you study uh, fossil history, you'll see that plants existed for 200, 300 million years without producing flowers. And then suddenly, about 65 million years ago, a bit more, uh, suddenly plant, uh, flowers appeared. And uh, Darwin thought that it was a mystery as to why they should have taken so long to develop and why they did develop when they did develop. I, I did make a series called The Private Life of Plants some 20 years ago, which was six programs, I think. Um, and of course, uh, you have to use lots of different techniques. I mean, most people would say that plants don't move, but of course, we know they move. I mean, bluebells blue bells suddenly appear. Of course they move, but you can't see them move. Uh, but you can see them move uh, using film cameras, time-lapse techniques. And suddenly you then see that plants aren't passive creatures, just sort of organisms just sitting around. They fight one another, uh, they strangle one another, they mate, uh, they move, they invade. So they do all sorts of things. And with time-lapse cameras you can show that. The lower lip of this little orchid has evolved to look, roughly, like a bee. And people used to think that was a kind of warning, to warn cows not to eat it, on the grounds that they wouldn't want to get stung on the tongue. But now we know that's not the case. This is a mimic of a female bee that's attracting a male to mate it, and when the male mates, it will pollinate the flower. Um, in your gardens, uh, you can do all sorts of things uh, to protect your British plants. You can, you can let them grow for, for a start, uh, which will also help the insects, which is very important. Uh, you can support your local uh, politicians and indeed your national politicians when they take steps to launch measures that are conservationist intended, that are green measures. Uh, green measures are very important for the world to take. Um, and sometimes they cost money. They aren't necessarily cheap. Uh, and politicians have got to have the courage to know that the electorate, like you and me, are behind them when they spend some of the money that you and I spend in our taxes on these green measures. These are among the most mysterious sundews. The leaves, like those of other plants, use sunlight to help them grow. But their glistening tentacles get food in another way. They are traps. It's been a great pleasure because I, I started on black and white 405 lines. Um, there were only two television studios in the whole of Europe and they were in Alexander Palace, where, which is where I worked. And to have had the pleasure of going through from 405 lines to 625 lines and 65 lines colour and then into a high def and then plasma screens uh, and finally in, into 3D has been a great pleasure. Um, 3D sets uh, are increasingly in number and uh, there are some subjects of which flowers are one which I think uh, 3D really does give you an added uh, insight into what's going on.